Today's guest is Zara Mahoon. She's a master mindset and law of attraction coach and manifesting expert. She's the author of 15 books on these subjects and the creator of the unlimited 40 day law of attraction workout and the unlimited 365 mastermind. After committing to completely transforming her self-worth in 2006, she went from being massively in debt to owning multiple properties and creating a thriving business as well as healing her relationships. Zara's books are based on a visual diagrammatic approach to the law of attraction. She breaks down complicated concepts into small bite-sized pieces linked to analogies that make them easy to remember and apply. Her courses and programs help individuals and families identify the blockages that are keeping them from achieving success. Um, she believes that all things are possible and that you can start from where you are and and create a better future once you start understanding how to use basic law of attraction concepts. So law of attraction, we just had a law of attraction expert a few weeks ago on the podcast, and it was so awesome to get Zara's input on all of this as well. She just has her own dynamic to bring to all of it. Obviously she's written 15 books on it. She's been coaching it for many years. This is her bread and butter. And I just so appreciated her perspectives today on honestly, the blocks that keep us from being able to use this tool and the things that help us get past those and start being able to attract the things in our lives that we want. She has a no nonsense approach in just a wonderful way. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this episode. Here is Zara Mahone. Okay. So Zara, I'm so excited to have you talk about law of attraction today because it has been such a huge piece in changing my life. <laughs> and so, I mean, you're an expert in this, you've authored many books in it. And so just in a, a very basic way, why should somebody care? Somebody's going along their life, they're doing their business, they're working their job, they're taking care of their kids and we're coming out in this little side and like, Hey, law of attraction. Why should someone care about law of attraction? They should care if they if they, they should not care if they're living the perfect life, <laughs> you know, like if you, if you're able to get all your goals, if you have love in your life, money in your bank account, peace in your heart, you're good to go. You don't need me. You don't need law of attraction. Wow. Love it. Okay. It's when, it's when we are not able to get those things and we start saying, okay, why am I not getting these things that I want? What's mm -hmm. wrong here? Yeah. That's when we need law of attraction. Yeah. So you're not liking the results you're getting. And, 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 and I'd say when you probably resonate, it's that, that frustration, like why, Absolutely. why is this why not me? working? Like, bleh. okay. So that's like pretty much everybody in some area of their life. <laughs> and that's so, why so um, many people are gravitating towards it. Right. That's why, yeah. we, that's why we are all going there. And I don't know if you've come across this, but I've come across this, this resistance. I'm sure you have this, um, um, almost insulting law of attraction because of a lack of understanding of yes. what it is. It's kind of like people make fun of it and poo poo it. Cause they're like, oh, okay. So I'm going to manifest my dream man and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to manifest yes. money. Like, and uh, can you go a little deeper with us on how it actually works, what it isn't and what it is? Well, it's disappointment will happen if you don't know how to use law of attraction properly because it actually will have the reverse effect. Yeah. It, not, it backfires. And unfortunately, people go out there and start trying to use it with only half the information. Yeah. Um, I'd say it's like using a complicated tool without the instruction manual. Very good analogy. Uh -huh. Right. And right. so the results that it's not that the tool doesn't work. It's just that you don't know how to use it. <laughs> and I always say that with electronics and things like that. I'm like, I am sure that this is user error. <laughs> and it is, exactly. It is user error when it comes to law of attraction. Mm. And one of the things that makes it really hard is that our childhood programming has made us so um, stuck in the way we think that when something opposes what we believe to be the way world, the world works, we are not willing to give it a try because Oof. we're just like, no, it can't be that easy. Because when your life has been hard, law of attraction seems like it's too easy. Mm. And so even starting out, people are uh, doubtful because yeah. they're like, it can't be that easy. But right. the problem is that if you bring doubt into the picture, <laughs> law of attraction will not work because it gives you whatever you think. If mm. you're doubtful, then you're going to manifest 
a situation that compounds the doubt. Mm, okay, let's pause on this, the programming about, because it is, it's like you got to work for it. And there, obviously you do have to take action and do things, Yes, yes but there's yes. this programming. I just was having this conversation yesterday with a friend of mine, who's also a, a coach, a trainer, lifts weights mm. and all these things. And I was like, you know what I've learned? I have learned that what we learned in the gym and weightlifting, the path to success is completely the opposite in every other area of life, because what's the programming? you got to make it harder. You literally have to go against ease. It's resistance training, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you're literally training yourself to go up against resistance, which has benefit, right? Doing cold showers, doing it's hard things. expansion, it's, yes. It, right. But... If you take that, I've learned, if you take that into entrepreneurship of this has to be hard, I have to literally make it harder than it naturally is or relationships. This has mm. to be hard. Mm. Relationships mm. have to be hard mm. where, you know, you take mm. that lesson anywhere else is like, mm. Oh no, no, mm. no. Mm. And so let's, mm. let's pause mm. there for a second on things. Have yes, to be yes, hard. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> let's pause there because I want to take that. What you just said, I want to take it a step further. Mm. My son is, uh, very much into, uh, you know, he's a bodybuilder uh -huh. in short. And yeah. so I, I see him and I'm very conscious of looking after my own health. So I have my, my own journey. Here's what I know to be true. When I see him and I see his friends working out, we have a gym at home. So he brings his friend. And, and when I'm working out, the thing is, it's, Tara, you're going to understand this. When you do a new move or you use a new muscle, the next day you feel that muscle. Right. And you know what? You enjoy it. You're like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Mm, okay, I got to work this a little more. Yeah. Right? Right. You're not like, oh my God, this is so painful and so this is too much struggle and I can't do it. See, that's the issue because when you go to the gym and you feel your body and you're getting into form, that's delicious. It's yummy. Mm -hmm. And that's why, even though there's effort, you enjoy that effort. Mm. Yes. Because you know that the benefit of the effort is within reach. You know what goes wrong with law of attraction? Is that it involves work, but you can't see the effect. Mm, yeah. And when you were saying that, like I'm in the energy of yeah. this is delicious and yes, I got exactly. sore. I did it, but not everybody is. Not everyone is. They, they, yeah. it's like, I don't they, believe this is going to work. I don't like this. I don't yeah. want to do this. And if I'm sore, that's a bad thing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is, enjoying the process and believing that you're going where That's right. you, you are going to get right, it right that belief, you can't go into it with doubt mm -hmm. doubt will kill the manifestation yeah so okay so somebody let's say somebody's starting and they're like okay okay you're intriguing me let's say let's use an example of i mean what's what are the biggest areas that you end up coaching in terms of law of attraction would you say that people are like help me with this area of my life Money and relationships. Money and relationships. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. So let's say somebody is like, they're not happy with either their current relationship or they're not in a relationship in this area of their life is just not going well. Where do you start with that person? What, like, how do you start with the programming? You know, how do we start to reprogram the, or even understand or know what our belief systems are that are blocking us? So um, if, if I was coaching someone, I let them talk. Yeah. Because as they talk and they tell me what is going on. Yes. I can pick up on their beliefs. Yes. And then we have to embark on a journey together where I point out to you what your current belief is. Right. Explain to you how that current belief is holding you back and then help you to shift it, to change your belief. This is, the, the, it's so powerful what you just said, you know, in, in the coaching work that I do, I've also learned like, you can't just interject. You got to observe, you got to sit and listen. Yes. And it's so valuable. And that's why I have coaches and I'm sure you've had many coaches and it, because oh, yes. once that, when you have a coach who is aligned, 
and they hear yes, yes. you say something that's like it's like they the touch. screech yeah. on the record player it's like exactly. whoa whoop, exactly. there it is exactly. right exactly. <laughs> and, and you know i ask them questions so when someone says um um you know this is what's going on and i say okay what is your what why do you think it's like that Mm, mm -hmm. and it's when i say why do you think it's like that that's when Mm. the beliefs show up beautiful because the answer to that is going so let's say somebody is um not happy in their relationship and and i'm having a discussion with them and they say well you know he's like this Mm -hmm. or she's like this Mm -hmm. um and i'm having a hard time coping with it and and then i ask them why do you think that is Mm. And, and now the answers will come will either be like oh i regret having this or i blame them for this yeah so now it's like you know we talk about peeling the onion the layers of the onion yeah. those are the layers so then you take that and you say okay tell me more about that why it did that happen or why it, why do you think it's like that yeah Yeah, beautiful coaching. Because it's those right. thoughts. It's your thoughts yes. that are right. It's your thoughts. So once you identify a thought, thoughts are sticky things. You can't just, you know, it's like it's like glue. It sticks. Mm. You touch a thought and it sticks on. Yeah. And you can't you can't just do that to get rid of it. You can't just say, "Okay, I'm just going to." magically make this disappear <laughs> you have to pry it off you have to yeah. pry it off your fingers you have to pry it off your heart yeah you pry it off wherever it's attached and i've learned that takes a lot of repetition if you're going to try to repattern rewire your brain it, i mean it, this is how i like to put it if we were just going to be able to rewire our brain on the first try with everything we would be a mess we would have oh, no yes. stability yeah yeah <laughs> it just everything yeah. would be confusing like oh yeah. what do i do with my life every single day right yeah. so it's useful yeah. that our brains pick up on patterns yes. stick yes. with them send them to our subconscious okay now you don't have to think about driving so much now you don't have to think about if you're going to brush your teeth like that's on autopilot and on it's autopilot. really it's helpful right but yeah. knowing that about ourselves it's like okay so if i'm going to reprogram my subconscious mind it's going to take some repetition exactly. before i get there exactly but the danger with that is if you repeat something that is not serving you it can end up becoming your new programming and it still doesn't work yeah exactly so, so that's where right. it's important to work either either um work with someone i really recommend work with someone who knows what they're doing yes because yeah. you can't see it so it's it's that concept that when something is too close to your face you can't see it okay what are some common belief systems and relationships that you see hold people back from having the relationships that they want um the biggest thing is thinking that the other person needs to change something mm. beautiful can you elaborate well because we always think that we are reacting to what someone else is doing but before that reaction happens we are attracting what they gave us mm but not not a lot of people like to own up to that one <laughs> yes yes and that's where all the work is understanding yeah. that we create everything that happens to us and that we actually are responsible for the way other people treat us Yes. Yeah. You know, I I went through a really low phase that my listeners have probably picked up on here and there where I was in a very very unhealthy relationship. And the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me when I was coming out of that and hired a coach and was doing all this yeah. healing work was finding out that like it, the question for me was why did you entertain that though? Like why do other people not entertain that kind of energy coming at them? What is going on inside you, inside you. that said yes? to that right and that's where all the healing was it's the ownership yeah, absolutely. The, it's not in shame it's not in guilt it's no. not what's wrong with you it's no. just no. Well, what's going on in there like why are yes. you saying yes to these things in your life and, and, you know what <laughs> i i find that um so this is i'm um this is one of the most important things i teach is that in the physical world there is correlation 
you can see the effect of an action that you take or a decision that you make. In yeah. the non-physical world, you think about one thing, but it's another thing that gets affected. Mm. And this is what confuses people and throws them off. So it's not necessary that your thoughts about a relationship were the ones that screwed up the relationship. It can be something completely different. And Interesting. This, is, this is where people are not able to see the connections. Right. And because they don't see the connections, they're not able to rewire the connections. Can you think of an example of that off the top of your head? Um, so this is a common one. People understand this is that the leading cause of divorce in the world is money, not the relationship itself. Mm, right. Great point. Okay. Now yeah. your thoughts about money end up taking your relationship down, but right. that's not the subject of wow. love right. between you and your spouse. It's a totally other subject. Mm. Your vibration of lack on the subject of money wow. now ends up creating lack of love in your life. Woo, that's powerful. So yeah. yes, that evidence is out there, but understanding right. it and taking a step back and accepting the fact that that's how it works yeah. because matter. So you see in the physical world, in the manifested world, we are dealing with matter. Matter is hard, knock on wood. You can see it, touch it, feel it, taste it, go to bed with it. <laughs> yeah. But in the non-physical world, things are more fluid. Yeah. And understanding that fluidity of the non-physical world is where most of the work is. Mm. How do people gain a deeper understanding of that non-physical world? They come and work with me and I show them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's so important. It's so important. It's like, I always say, you know, people are aware that if they, you know, they have those little moments where they're thinking about yes. someone and then they yes. all, all of a sudden that person <laughs> messages them or texts them or, you know, that people are aware that they're, it's like, wow, I was just talking about you. And then you exactly. text me, that's weird. And so we're aware that these things happen and we're like, oh, that's crazy. That's magic. And I'm like, Mm, I'm like no. the way I see it. I was like, there's a connection between everything that we yeah. as human beings lack, fail to understand kind of like how human beings didn't, didn't know electricity yeah. could be a thing before they harnessed it. Exactly. That's how I see it. It's, it's exactly. there. Exactly. It's, it's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Let's, so you have to, you have to take the time to understand that, right? Yeah. And, and, and just kind of speaking of that, like, I know that you have, you have programs and courses, you have coaching, you have books for somebody who wants to get like a, they want to dabble. Okay. They want to mm -hmm. dabble. They, they want to learn a little bit more about this. Where would you recommend that they start? Um, the book thrive is the book that explains the science behind the law of attraction cool. because, and it explains it in a manner that anyone can understand it. You, you don't need to have anything to do with science to to be able cool. to understand it but because the book is based on diagrams and the diagrams explain mm. the diagrams will draw out the connections that you can't see with your eyes very cool so that's that's why those diagrams are so helpful it that is the best place to start for understanding how the non-physical world works Awesome. So thrive. So we'll link that in the show notes and all of her offerings guys in the show notes. So thank you for that. All right. Let's talk about money for a second, right? Sure. Let's talk about money. So common money blocks that you see, can you think of any of those off the top of your head? <laughs> is that, um, the common ones that I see are money is hard. Yeah. And the most common one is that money will only come to me through this place, this place that I call my job or my business or my spouse. Oh, wow. Yeah. Narrow focus of this. is So all. that's tunnel vision is that it can only come to me from here. So wow. then that because you see that, uh, for example, you see that um, uh, your spouse only earns so much. So how is more money going to come? But I need more money, but it has to come through him. Otherwise, it can't come. Right. So now you so you've created these limitations where literally money could fall from the sky, but it won't 
Yeah. Because I'll share. I think it only comes from there. I'll share a quick story on that. I've got a friend who's very much into this work. She's super intuitive. She's, you know, all into Joe Dispenza and all this work. And like, you know, so she's, she's tapped in and she, she sent me a message once and she was like, Tara, I just want to thank you. Cause I really wanted to come to your last retreat and I needed $5,000 for like all the travel the retreat and all this stuff. And she's like, so I got in the belief system. I was like, $5,000 is coming to me. I don't know how, but it's coming to me. And it's, she told me this story of how her flights got canceled and the airline gave them this crazy generous, like, uh, compensation. And she's like, $5,000 came. She's like, girl, I'm so sorry. I just found out I can't come to your retreat, but thank you for the $5,000. <laughs> but like that was like a girl. I was like, holy crap, dude. Like you tapped in, you know, but that's yeah. like that came out of quote unquote nowhere, you know, but exactly. she was so deep exactly. in that place. And she's like, no, exactly. I know it's coming. <laughs> exactly. And there are so many stories of that type. I've got my own stories where money just showed up because I needed it. And it yeah. just showed up in the nick of time. And, you know, like everything fell into place and from places that I never expected. Right. Yep. So I had is- one too. Right. I was yeah. like very specifically, I was like, I need $10,000. And I was in full belief. I got a book offer. They gave me a 10. Th- they were like, we'd like to give you an advance of what is it to the dollar amount? $10,000. Yep, exactly. I was like, holy so crap. These things are happening <laughs> for people, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so that's the thing is when you limit yourself, it cannot come through any other means. So you have to literally remove Ugh. limitations. Ugh. And everyone so that I've ever worked with on the subject of money has limitations. Mm. And so this is why I created a 21-day abundance challenge. Yes. Which, you know, which helps people overcome their money. I want to do it. I want to do yeah. it. I think I'm going to oh, do yeah, it. For but... sure. For sure. It's going to be uh, the next one is in January. Okay. And I, cool. I've written a book about money because money has been a big part of my struggle. Mm. Right. I was raised with parents who right. had very negative beliefs about money. It was all my mother used to repeat this all the time. Money doesn't hang on trees. You can't right. have anything you want. You know, right. So I, I grew up with that belief system. It took me a while to reprogram all of that. Yes. And then I wrote a book book called Prosperity Puzzle, which is all about how to get rid of your money programming. Yeah, I I went through kind of an awakening when my kids were like 10 to 12 and down. I have four kids. Mm-hmm. And so it's been this really interesting thing because I'm like, I'm no, you can, you can create like, because I did the same thing when they were little, like, no, no, we can't have that. Like, don't even ask because you're not getting that, you know? And I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, that that was not the correct lesson. The correct lesson might've been, is that really important to us? Do I really want that or not? You know, those kind of things, but it's been cool. My son, he wanted a laptop recently. He just got it yesterday. Just got it yesterday. He was like, Thanks, mom. And I, but it was all through me just being like, dude, if you want to get that, you can make that happen. You can make exactly. it happen. And he did. Exactly. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. And that's the best thing we can teach our children is that we are not okay. So here's we're going on to another topic now, but parenting. This was yeah. my struggle as well with my children because I was brought up differently. But I started changing my self-talk. And the thing is, don't become your children's source. Yeah. don't teach them to think that if they need something, it has to come through you. Yeah. Right. Because that's limiting them. Right. It's kind of like the coaching questions you asked in the beginning. And that's what I do with my son. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, how do you think you could make that happen? And it is so cool. Now my younger 10 year old son is inspired by his 15 year old brother. And he's like, oh my gosh. And it's so cool to see them come up with the yes. ideas, the sparks of like, <laughs> if I do 10 chores at your house and 10 chores at dad's house for this many weeks, I can do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm paying them for chores. I am somewhat involved yeah. in that, but I'm not giving them the idea, right? That's an option, you know, but they're creating yeah. it. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Anyone um, can learn at any age. So, okay. Let's, let's stay on money a little bit longer. So, okay. I love this talk about like, it can only come from this source. That's really good for even us, for us entrepreneurs. Yes, Cause exactly. I sometimes get caught in that too. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> there's other yeah. options out there. So I appreciate yes. you saying that it's kind of a good yeah. m- reminder for me. Um, but like, what about like, what I'm kind of coming across a lot is like, it's like the, the 20 year olds crowd, like the, tw- maybe anywhere from like age 20 to 30, early thirties. Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm seeing a yeah. lot of this, like, 
I feel for those people, honestly, because I feel like they've been exposed to so much of this kind of talk. And I, I just sense this general sense of like paralysis and them like, okay, I just want to make everything manifest and appear, but freak, I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. You know, yeah. can you speak on that? Oh, um, my advice to anyone in that age group and any other age group for that matter is to turn off the news, mm. turn off the news and stop hanging out with naysayers. And maybe social media naysayers too, naysayers. right? They're probably more the social media consumers. Well, yeah. So the, the thing about social media as well as anything else is that once you change your mindset, because it's attraction, then you yes. won't see all of that. Yes, yes. Right? But to begin with, in order to enable the change, you've got to turn all of that negative stuff off. Nice. Because I know, and I have uh, children in that age group, my daughter is in that age group, is that you start listening to what other people are saying. And, you know, they're saying like, oh, we can, things have gone up so much. We can never afford to buy a place of our own. Right. Have, you know, jobs are hard to find. That's the talk that's going on in that yep. generation. And I know because I witness it in my own family. Yeah. Is that, but you have to understand that that's not what's happening to everyone. Right, right. So if there is one person who can do it, then other people can do it too. Remember, one person ran the four minute mile and then everyone started breaking his record. Exactly. Yeah. And you make such a good point. I do feel like that age group is very susceptible to like, they're, they're kind of like learning the adult world still, honestly. And so it's like, oh, okay, that's how it works or that's how it works. Yeah. And it's so confusing. And yeah. I, you know, I, even like some of the, I love first of wait, hold on. I got to go back. I love what you said about you are attracting stuff that resonates on your frequency yes. on social media. Some friends and I talked about this exactly. once. It's like, if yeah. you don't like social media, that's on you because you exactly. are choosing everything that you consume on there. If it's exactly. Instagram, you're choosing to follow those accounts. If it's TikTok, it's basing the algorithm based off what you watch. So if you don't like it, you got to own that. It's like, what, exactly. what am exactly. I, what, energy am I in that yes. I'm saying yes to these things. Right. That's and then right. the other thing I'll just say is like, uh, my sister, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing, but my sister is she's, she's 31 and she sent me some stuff about dating. And I was just, it's like all these rules. Right. And hmm. it, it's like, well, if you do this, if you have then sex then, with a guy too early, then he will just do this to you. And if this happens and then this yeah. happens, and this is how guys think, and this is how women think. And I'm like, I'm like, That's stop, limiting. stop. Yeah. yeah. Those don't, are all limitations. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, this is a, just a belief system. And, and even like some exactly. of the astrology type things I I'll see pop up. Yes. Some of it I like, but then I have to unfollow. So it's like Mercury's in retrograde. So prepare to have everything go to crap in your life. And I'm like, I'm I don't buy into it to at all. That. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. <laughs> to me, uh, and I don't mean to offend anyone. <laughs> but to me, astrology is a very old science and it's like uh, using an old manual to operate a new machine. Interesting, interesting perspective. Yeah. And it, the other thing is, you know, there may be some beautiful truths in it because there's truths in everything, but there's a lot of wonky. There's a lot of here, we're going to tell you how your life's going to go, you know, and I'm, yeah. I'm not opposed to it at all. I think it's interesting and I like to explore all sorts of things, but I don't like the energy of, I mean, it kind of goes with this whole conversation. It's like, these are programs. These are belief yeah. systems that mm -hmm. you're adopting. So be mindful of what, be which mindful. programs you're. The only thing there, it's all it's all guidance comes to us in different ways. Yes. And, but the thing in it, and not everyone does this, is if you say it can never change. Mm. Because you see, mm. if you say that this is the path you're on and this is never changing, <laughs> that's, the, that's the part that is, yeah. that is unacceptable yeah. because... Um, then you're limiting yourself, right? That's, that's again yep. a tunnel that, but law of attraction is that if you change one thing, everything changes. Yeah. And we, and we know that because we know that if I act differently today, I will get a different response. That's right. going to change my whole life. Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's nothing that we cannot change. 
Yeah. I love this. Can you, can you speak a little bit on, um, self image and law of attraction, right? Cause what I find so much is what I see is like, somebody's like, okay, I want, 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 it's all desire, 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 want, 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 but they don't change the way they're seeing themselves. Right. So it's, I still feel like I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'm going to get in this really strong desire energy. And what I find is like, self-image work is so, your relationship with yourself, how you're seeing yourself, that yes. connection is crucial for quote unquote success with law of attraction. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, you see, absolutely. Self, self-worth self is at the basis of owning who you really are as yeah. an extension of source energy. Yes. <laughs> well said. So source energy is showing up in all sorts of different ways in the world um and one of the ways that source energy is showing up is you yes we are expressions of we the are same ex- energy exactly exactly <laughs> of that same energy so how can you find fault with that and if you find fault with that then you're finding fault with yourself right. and if you're finding fault with yourself then you're finding fault with that yeah yeah see, see any way you cut it if i am if I am an extension of source and I find uh, find fault with myself, I'm actually finding fault with source. Yes. Yes. So how is that going to help me? That's, yeah. That's not going to help me because what that does is it creates a constriction in your ability to use source's power. Right. And, and I'd say the, the medicine I love for that is, is, is instead of judgment, curiosity, right? Curiosity, yes. Like, oh, that's interesting that I'm showing up like that. That's interesting. Right. And get curious about it. Then you get tapped into kind of like how you observe Absolutely. source in the Curi- world. Curiosity is such a beautiful word. A- word. Absolutely. Cur- curiosity. But um, I think that one of the things that diminishes a self-worth is comparison. Yes. So if we if we did not compare ourselves with other people, then then we wouldn't feel less than. Yeah. Yes. And comparing where we are now to where we quote unquote want to be, that comparison I have found separates us. That that it blocks oh, for sure. the law of attraction sure. like crazy. For the sure. only thing because the thing is you can get <laughs> that journey very quickly if you make changes. Yeah, you have it to be have it to now. take long. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I see this all the time. It's like, you know, cause I'm doing health coaching with people. Right. So it's like, I want to be like that. And my yeah. answer is always, you are that now be that person. Yeah. Now be her yeah. today. What yeah. does she yeah, eat yeah. for lunch? When does she go to bed tonight? That's it. And yeah. you close that gap. Cause that separation, you know, and I think it's, it's been the same with money and relationships. It's like, well, I want that, but I'm not that now when I got to do all this hard work to it. So I can be that person. Yes. Yeah. And instead it's like, no, you, you be that person. Now you just pattern that. And now, and now you start to attract and choose all the things that go in alignment with that person. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, well, it, it just, just to round that off, yes, I want to say please. something that I like sharing with people is that if your goal is big enough, then no fear can get in your way. What mm. happens is we have the goal, but then we have a fear and yeah. the fear contradicts the goal. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, I want to be like that, but I can't do all of that. I can't eat all of that. I can't do that. So that then is what diminishes our self-worth because we're telling ourselves we can't. How do you help people get past that fear? Um, by drilling down. The fear comes from somewhere. It started somewhere. Yeah. So there are two ways to do this. Um, one is to understand that you have a fear and just make a decision not to have that fear anymore. Mm. And the other one is to work on the fear so that you can give it up. Let me give you an example. I was always afraid of creepy crawlies as a child. Of I was what? Free. You know, just creepy little creatures. I okay, was, got it. Yeah. I was <laughs> always afraid. So um, if, if there was a spider or a cockroach, I would scream for help. 
it was like the world was ending <laughs> i am a kid like that <laughs> until until i had a child and now it was like well i don't want her to have this fear mm. so the fear's gone mm. because now when i see a spider i'm just going to pick it up and put it away throw it away mm. because that's what i so what happened yeah i changed i made yeah. a decision not to have that fear anymore yeah so sometimes giving up a fear is just a decision and when the goal is important enough the fear doesn't get in the way yeah i have found for me a little hack that i do in my own mind is when i start to get fear come in like i i've shared this but when i started retreats i found all these fears coming in like what if we only sell three spots and then i have to cancel it it's embarrassing what if it what if things don't go well what if people don't like it what if it, all this stuff was coming yeah. in, right and yeah. i would just i just took it and i intentionally turned fear into excitement. So I just reprogram every time I feel like come up, I'm like, mm -mm, this is going to yes. be freaking awesome. So that's gonna... number two. Yeah. That's number two. So, so the two, two techniques, one is just drop the fear. Yeah. The, number two is change your self-talk. Yeah. And integrate a new pattern. Yeah. Cause I was like, because this is you can pattern. talk yourself into something, right? You can talk yourself out of something. Yeah. It's just like, you know, going off a high dive or something yeah. like that, jumping off a cliff. Yeah. It's like, you're going to yeah. see all those years come up. And at some point you have to choose, I'm going to overcome you, yes. that and change right. my pattern here and exactly. do the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just be your own best friend. What would your friend tell you under the circumstances? Give yourself that pep talk. Mm. Okay. I have to ask you, you know, I, I have to ask you, how did you get into all this? What, what's your, what's your story here? <sighs> That's we we'll, we we'll need a very long time to. <laughs> uh, my story is that I was always a nonconformist as a child. I couldn't mm. understand what I was being taught, and I was um, always asking questions. Nice. And the the bottom line was that I didn't think that there was a God that could be loving, and then punish you at the same time. I didn't think that there could be a God that didn't have a fair system for giving, for, um, you know, um, uh, granting wishes. I was, it just sounded bogus to me that you have to be, you have to do all these things to please this entity in the sky. Um, because then, then, then you can't tell me that God is fair and also tell me that God plays favorites. So I had, when, when I was being taught religion, I had all sorts of, okay, but how can, how can, how can God do these things that are contradictory? Yeah. You're like, something's not adding up here. <laughs> not adding up here. Yeah. Um, and so I was always asking questions and then I realized that my questions were not politically correct. <laughs> I can relate, girl. I can relate. <laughs> so I stopped asking questions mm. outwardly, but mm. inwardly kept searching for the answers. Awesome. So my journey started when I was a kid, when I was six years wow. old. Wow. Wow. Good for you. Divergent thinker is what I call it. You're just not buying the, the programs. No. You weren't buying the program. So you've always kind of been attracted to this of uh, a seeker towards like, the mm -hmm. deeper, like, what are people, what, what are all these programs that I'm being taught? And I'm going to stay aligned with source. That's what I'm hearing as a little, even as a little girl, you were like, I'm going to stay aligned with source and like get information from real source, not programs. I want the real deal. Not all of this bogus stuff that you're telling yeah. me. Yeah. I was just always telling myself, there's got to be a system that is fair. Mm. That is not dependent on someone, including God's opinion of me that is just fair we've got to know what the rules of the game are otherwise how can we play mm. so how did you stumble on law of attraction in this journey uh, see it's it started being called law of attraction when the secret movie came out but yeah. it's not something new yeah. it's always been there yeah yes it's just and understanding energy right like under, right. being I connected mean, there's so <laughs> many teachers yeah. uh, in the past yeah. and books written in the past used to call it inspiration, motivation, uh, you know, uh, right. just, uh, 
yeah, positive, being positive thinking, all of those things yeah. are just part of what law of attraction is. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, looking for the, the layers underneath the obvious layers, right? Yeah. Looking for the, the subtle energies underneath all of it and being connected yeah. to those and observing those and learning from those. And yeah, that's how I see it too. And I think that's how most people who are into this work. It's just, it's, it's, it's the Nikola Tesla quote, right? If you want to understand the secrets of the universe, look at frequency, energy, and vibration, something yeah. like that. It's, it's that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and it helps us to close the gap between science and spirituality. Mm, yeah. Basically. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just had this conversation with another mindset coach last night. We're like, yeah. it's the same. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just understanding it in a different way. Yes. Yeah. It's uh and I love that you use source. I sometimes people are like, why do you say that? Why do you say source? I'm like, it's just the thing that makes the most sense to me. I don't know how else to say it. And I'm I'm okay with not knowing exactly what that is. I'm okay with not having definitive, clear, you know, and if other people want to do that, that's totally fine. But I resonate with you. It's just it's it's just this tapping in to all that is. And that's the best word I can put on it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because um because the words people used or I grew up with had limitations. Yes. See? Yes. And that's, and my whole journey is about getting away from any sort of limitation. Love it. I love it. That's so cool. It's so cool. I love, I love hearing that. I love, thanks for sharing your experience. Cause it's like, Oh, I've got this little girl. That's like mm -mm, not buying it. And just all, all this journey has led you here. And I guess we'll go ahead and close it off, but I got to say, guys, you got to go to her website. It's Z, right? So the letter Z and then Mahoon. Am I saying that right? Yes. Okay. M A H O O N.com. And so make sure you go over to like her books and courses. Um, she's got a blog and a bunch of stuff on there, but she's got 15 books guys. So lots to choose from. We'll make sure we link up thrive specifically. You've also got your programs and courses, your coaching, um, anything in particular you want to tell them about that you've got coming up. Maybe that, I mean, I guess that January. Well, also, yes. Look out for the challenge in January, the abundance challenge. I also do a new new year, new vibe workshop, which is uh, going to be just before new year. Um, so those are the events that are in the pipeline just now. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. So such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us today. Thank you for having me.